Terry Honey and I'm broadcasting to you live here from the platform at Victory Press Chapel. It's a Christian family church where we come together to connect and just love on everyone and share the word of God and live authentic lives and bring transformation and just be all that God intended us to be. Amen. Touch on something today to help you. You know, there are so many things happening. Supernatural encounters are available to all who have a heart for God and desire to be used by Him. There are so many true accounts of children, kids that are unlocking the power of God through visions, healing, miracles, and radical God encounters that they're experiencing worldwide. And these are true stories that you can find everywhere in the marketplace, marketplace intercession, prophetic evangelism, everything you know they're doing to seek a deeper way with God and I know that today the word of God is going to build faith in you that's going to bring glory to him amen let us pray and just come into his presence this morning our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, that today you will transform. You will renew lives, Lord, according to your will and according to their faith. Father, whatever they have prepared in their hearts to receive from you today, God, please grant it unto them according to your word is written in Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord is a, is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. And so, Father, today I say if you can use anything Lord use me I healed my life to you father today as a vessel to be used by you in this season amen so this morning I just want to thank you for wherever you are signing on from wherever you are located and just let the spirit of the Lord come and just dwell in and envelop you embrace you and minister to you in this time amen no you, you are trusting God for a supernatural encounter for a miracle for something that he's going to do in and through your life amen so this is the thing our scripture for for, for this message is um, in Acts chapter 2 and it says that it shall come to pass in the last days says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And just to recap a little bit on what we spoke about last week, about how the word supernatural, it means and it's attributed to some force behind beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature. No one can understand or try and work it out. And we spoke about how the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds of the mind and getting our emotions intact. And I spoke about how we live in kingdom mindset because you are a kingdom champion. Amen. And then Joshua encouraged us in verse 3 to 5. He encouraged the people. He said, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you so today get real and expect it expect God to do wonders among you I spoke about forgiveness how it's not an emotion my friend it's a decision and I know it's a big decision for a lot of people to make that decision on a daily basis seven times 77 times seven times we have to forgive and I know there's a reason why God was so I'm passionate about sharing that with us and Jesus kept on saying, kept on saying, forgive, forgive. Because if we do not forgive others, we cannot be forgiven. And I don't want to be living in a place where I'm blocking God's blessings, where I am standing in the way of receiving everything that God has for me. So today, just determine in your heart to release, forgive, because we're going to touch on another issue today that's going to help you get back into believing and stepping into the supernatural realm again. Because many believers, even great men of faith and one of faith, have lost 
their faith and hope in God. They don't want to believe in the supernatural anymore. Come on, because sometimes we can't comprehend the greatness of God. Jesus went about doing good all the time, right? So in Matthew chapter 4, we see how Jesus ministers to the great crowd. We don't want to allow the things of the world to choke us up from and preventing us from receiving all that God has for us or stepping into what God has in store for us because of unforgiveness. And I was just mentioning that earlier. And forgiveness is key to your breakthrough. You want to move in the supernatural. If you want to start believing the supernatural again, forgive. Because the other part I want to touch on today is a little bit, which is which has come up a lot lately in the counseling rooms and with everyone looking for help, is anger and I'm just being led to this morning to speak a little about anger. It wasn't on my agenda to do, but as I was preparing this morning and just finishing off, I just clearly know that anger I need to touch on because a lot of people are in a very angry position because of what COVID did to them, to their families, to their work and to every situation in their life. And I know that God wants to heal and set some people free in that area. But I'm not going to harbor that point too much. I want to get on to Matthew chapter 4, how Jesus ministers to great crowds. And listen to this in verse 23. This is just the base. I'm just setting a foundation, everyone, okay? Verse 23, it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy and he healed them verse 25 and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond the Jordan now listen Jesus taught his disciples how to walk in the supernatural they got into lots of trouble for doing the Lord's work. And last week I spoke a little bit about what happened on the journey with Paul when they were on the missionary trip. Now again, Peter and John came before the council in Acts chapter 4. Go with me to Acts chapter 4 verse 1. And they spoke unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead and they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day for it was now eventide how be it many of them which heard the word believed and the number of men was about five thousand and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Sir Pius, Cephas that and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. Listen to this. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, but by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, he rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the imp impotent man by what means he is made whole. Be it known unto you all that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Listen, family, verse 13. Um, and it says there, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, but we cannot deny it. 
but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man of this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge he, for we cannot but speak the things which we heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old, or to whom this miracle of healing was shown. Now, this is an amazing part of scripture. It speaks about what Jesus did and about how, I mean, how the miraculous works were working through the um, apostles in the time. And the thing is, you know, we, we still look at the scripture today. Isaiah 28 verse 29 speaks about how God gives supernatural guidance and imparts great wisdom to his children. So when we want to move in the supernatural and see these things manifest, we have to know God. We have to, like I said Wednesday evening on Holy Communion, you have to have that relationship with God. You have to know who you are in Christ. You have to have that firm foundation and stand on that rock that cannot be shaken, like a tree planted solid by the waters whose roots will grow so deep that it cannot be tossed to and fro by just any wind of doctrine. So this is the key my friends faith is built up when we speak and when we glorify God when we speak about God and his and, and and his works what he gave us to do and glorify him this is when faith arises so I want to just build up your faith a little bit so you can start believing in the supernatural again because we serve a healing Jesus he is the same yesterday today and forever he does not change my friend the tables are turning and I've been saying it for a while God is busy doing th something in your favor even while you're sitting here listening to this God is busy turning things around for you he's doing things for you in your favor come on somebody this is for someone out there who's waiting on a turnaround who's waiting for something to happen and it's your time now where God is turning things around for you amen so how God anointed Jesus with power in Acts 10 38 the same way Matthew 8 16 God anointed many believers with the same miraculous powers and gifts to do this work today he's called many of you and he said come I want you to do this in my name and then verse 16, it says, when evening has come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast the spirits with the word and he healed all who were sick. He used the word. Many of us can attest today. Many of us can look around and, and because of things that we've witnessed, the things that we've seen, deliverance and healings and miracles, people being restored, revival taking place. And I don't know about you, family, when I see this happening today, so when I see ministers ministering this word, or when I see us praying for people and I see them get healed, but most of all, the miracle of salvation, it's still it still stirs something in me. We still get that, that moment of, oh my God, is this really happening? You know, and we see the miraculous. We see the manifest power of God working in the lives of the people. Amen. So I was saying to the Lord, Lord, how are we going to do this? How are we going to be able to pray for people, although we cannot lay hands on them? And he said, well, they have hands. And if they believe, they can lay hands on themselves. Because about a week ago, I had... Um, a very severe pain you know, on my temples you know it was just so crazy pain coming from I don't know where you know but I think I know where it came from and I started laying hands and I said Lord I don't know what this pain is and you know before I administer medication or whatever I'm going to trust you for a miracle and because I knew this was a demonic oppression or something and as I laid my hands on it and I didn't think about it later and I went to lie down and I felt the pain was gone because I couldn't lie on the side of my head. So that was a supernatural manifestation of God's healing power. He just whoop, set me free from whatever spirit of oppression that wanted to come upon me. So God is looking for someone to say, Lord, here are my hands. Use me. You might have a challenge today. You may have an ailment in your body today. And God is going to say to you today, I want you to do this. But let me first take you to a couple of things that I want you to be 
uh, aware of today before we move into that. Amen. So I was speaking about forgiveness last week and this week. I want to talk about the anger. And God says, you know, everything is temporary. You can command things. You have the authority. Temporal things will go. Because Paul even said to the lame man, he said, stand up and walk. A word of knowledge came to him. A revelation was flowing for miracles to happen. So for us to walk in the supernatural, we have to have a gift of special faith, gift of discernment, gift of knowledge, and revelation from the word must be evident in your life. And this only comes through having a relationship of, with God. So here's the deal. You know, in Acts chapter 3 is the story in verse 2 when he says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So who seeing them, Peter and John, went into the temple and, and they asked him for alms. And they said to and Peter, fastening his eyes upon this man with John, and he said, Look at us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And they took, and he took him up by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, immediately, he was on his feet and ankle bones received strength and he was leaping and leaping up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. He went leaping and praising God and some of you will go leaping and praising God. Your, your um, ailment, your thing that is holding you back may not be a physical um, lameness in physical uh, stature. It may be a lameness in the spirit. It may be something that has been stagnant in your life, but God is awakening that today. He's turning your situation around. Listen to me today, church. God is turning your situation around. Many things that are coming upon people nowadays are all, uh, are, are mostly are demonic attacks. And these are all caused by, all many afflictions are caused by these demons. So you have the authority that you can cast it out by the name of Jesus in the same way that the disciples did, because you too have received the power. Like I said, we are all ministers and we can minister where we have the faith and the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Amen. So some were given access by a person who is in a state of anger and unforgiveness. These are how these demons enter. So let's get into the anger part. We dealt a bit with forgiveness. I'll touch a little bit on forgiveness again. But there are just too many people that are angry in the season. And this is why the Lord has been pressing this in my heart to share with you this morning. So here's the thing. Do you know that one of the root causes of anger, we deal a lot with this on our God encounter days. Um, and there are so many causes for things happening in our lives. And the one thing that gets people into a place of anger is what I want to talk about is blame and shame. Blame is easy. Taking responsibility is hard. Here's the thing. Anger is easy and self-control is hard. So externally, we may become angry with other people who tempt us to do something that is wrong, that, that we know is against our will or against our better judgment. And sometimes we get angry when these things come upon us and, and people know they, they, that we're vulnerable and this thing will happen. Internally, we become angry with ourselves for being gullible, buying into that lie, participating in the act, even though we know it is wrong. So this is the thing. We blame ourselves and often the shame comes along with it. So living disregarded, dishonored, unworthy, un or embarrassed in our own minds, this is what happens when shame comes upon you. Take responsibility for your actions today. Do not get into that blame game trap. Many people are trapped in that place. And when you accept forgiveness for your wrongdoings and extend that same forgiveness toward others, this is the thing. Blame and shame will have no power over you any longer. The other thing that keeps people, gets people angry are dreams that are not being manifested, dreams that have not been realized. COVID has stopped many people from reaching their dreams and, and entering into everything that they've been trusting God for. I know some people might have uh, wanted to be in other countries by now, or they might have wanted to do a lot of other things, 
and it didn't manifest because of COVID, because of the lockdown for so many months. You know, I read a story the other day, which I know is going to encourage somebody today. And this is the story. I just, I just uh, um, made some notes to remind me about this 23-year-old guy. He, they, because they weren't very wealthy, he, they were on, they lived on a farm, and his father said to him, "Look, you can't go and study." And this guy wanted to be a doctor. He wanted to study medicine, and. Um, he was angry at his father because he now had to work on the farm, you know, and they, the times were just really tough. There was no money. The, everything was of short supply. And he thought, well, he has to obey his father's demands. There's nothing he could do because he was um, dependent on his father. But when he turned 23, he had enough of farm life. He packed his belongings, loaded his car and drove away, taking with him a heart full of bitterness and resentment toward his father. And for the rest of Elias' life, he held on to this anger and blamed his father for the loss of his dream. And how many people aren't blaming parents, friends, spouses, and everyone for the loss of their dreams? And as the years passed by, this man, he allowed a few people to get close to him. But the bitterness he held inside spilled onto every relationship. Every relationship he tried to develop, it was just constantly him coping with feelings of rejection and isolation. He moved from job to job, unable to settle down or succeed at anything. And finally, he met a woman and she was genuine. She cared for him. And after a short time of their marriage, an unexpected explosion of anger nearly ended the affection that his bride had for him. But she didn't leave him. She cringed at this temper that he had. And most of her friends refused to come to their home. They simply couldn't tolerate being in the presence of a person so filled with anger and bitterness. So this man held on to the rage until the end of his life. Even when he was senile and unable to care for himself, the poisons of resentment and bitterness continued to eat away at him. The longer he held on to this anger, the hotter it burned inside of him. So some of you can identify with that explanation. I want to tell you, this is the thing. Spiritual healing has to come to this man, but he didn't want it. He didn't want joy and peace. He died a bitter, angry person, angry at his dad. I don't know about all the reasons behind all of this, but I can tell you this much. He probably built up resentment toward his father, not knowing that it wasn't just a farm hand his father needed. His father probably didn't have the money. He didn't know any other way out. He didn't know how to bring him onto a place of, of, of peace and say to him, son, what I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. Help me through this. You know, they could have done something like that. So when we hold on to our anger and bitterness, our entire lives will suffer the poison of that thing. I call it a disease. All right. So you need to pursue peace with people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. This is what the Bible said. It says, lest any root of bitterness springs up, cause trouble. And by this, many people become defiled. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. And the next thing that holds people into in anger so this, this, there are so many. I just want to give you a few keys. And I know this is for someone here today. Because God wants to set you free. He wants you to walk in that freedom and liberty and power. And the, the, the one I want to speak about is pride. Pride, pride, pride. Anytime a person doesn't get what he deeply desires, anger is likely there. You know, so whether it's jealousy, envy, greed, or losing something close to you, something close to your identity, losing just anything. They can't get their way. Anger tends to be the result when they have that in their mind. It's my way or the highway, or I don't want to be part of it. They just don't want to come into agreement or allow others their space. But no one can have his or her way all of the times in all things. It's not fair. It's not right. You know, so many people become angry when they don't have control over a situation. So the anger can spin off and out of control when you realize that you don't have any control over it. And many people are in that space where they're angry because they don't have control over a situation. And I spoke to someone the other day who sat at my counter and says, I don't know why I'm so angry. And I said, you know what, the root of all anger most of the time is unforgiveness. 
So the two goes together. You know, the minute we identify what really angers us, is it the pride, is it the insecurity, be it the, uh, the dreams that weren't realized, you know, whatever it is, is that thing making you so angry that you cannot forgive and release the, peep, the person or just let it go so that you can walk in the realm of the supernatural and receive what God has in store for you? And we must dig out the root of bitterness. I agree with you. So dig it out today. Allow God to show you what Bitterness is deep there in your heart, in your in your heart that needs to to come out. And the Bible speaks about so many stories about men who were angry and faced the consequences of their anger, things that they did, their bitterness and hostility, their rage, everything that happened in the Bible and is still happening today. It has consequences, you know, it affects not just themselves, it affects the people around you. So this is the thing. Most of these examples are related to directly directly related to pride and the desire to have things done done their way it's all only their way insecurities is the last one of anger those insecurities come with low self-esteem and all those things related to low self-worth you know comes from rejection fears fear of loss, fear of the future, fear of the unknown, disappointment, feelings of inadequacy. There are so many I can mention to you today, but not everyone who has these feelings become angry because, but some people do. They blame themselves, they blame others, they feel the shame, they have this deep inner frustration that develops, that takes the form of anger. So let go of the anger. You want to experience the supernatural. You want to walk in the supernatural. Forgive, forgive forgive it's not an emotion my friend it's a decision we offer this to you all the time today i offer it to you again forgive everyone let go of bitterness resentment and anger everything that's flooding your emotions when you really forgive someone you are making a decision to release them you are making a decision to set them free here's the thing the intimacy with God reminds me of Enoch's walk. And I shared a little bit about that on Wednesday evening in the communion. And Enoch was so walked so close with God that he was translated in just in just like that. You know, he didn't see death. And then of course there's the love. Love your the unloving. Love your enemies. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. I can't express that enough, family. Today, let that love just saturate your heart. The miracle power of God is available to those who are expectant for that today. You want to receive the power of God in your life, the miracle power that is available to those who are expectant today. You may know or you probably do have a deaf ear. You can place your finger in that ear and we're going to pray in a short while. You may be the one who has a problem with your knee. Place your hand on your knee or on your ankle, whatever joint where it really hurts. Somebody may have a frozen shoulder. Ask someone to place their hand on the shoulder if you're not able to reach there or just throw a cloth or a pillow wherever you are, put something on that. And I want to pray for those today who are suffering with autoimmune diseases, whether you have arthritis of all kind, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid, gout, lupus, all of that, lie flat on your stomach wherever you are on the bed, get into position because God's healing power is about to saturate your body. He's about to, he's probably starting in some of you already ready he's about to touch you because he's a supernatural god he can still do supernatural things through you today there's somebody may that's struggling to breathe you may have breathing problems your lungs are not operating properly and god wants to touch your lungs today he wants to blow in the rua breath of god place your hands on your chest god is wanting to heal those who have cataracts in their eyes today put your hands on your eyes those with intestinal problems ibs put your hands on your belly Come on now, let faith arise in the name of Jesus because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And God can still do the miracle in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to pray and release over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every demonic attack and infirmity according to your word, Lord. And the faith of the one that is receiving your deliverance right now in the name of Jesus 
be healed, be healed and be set free from that spirit of oppression, the spirit of infirmity that has been trying to attack your life in the name of Jesus. Now that you've forgiven all and now that you deal with all the anger and the uproot, the bitterness and, and resentment toward others, God is able to come and pour out his love upon you. Amen. There are things that you couldn't do before because I know you can do it now. Yes, you must just do something very quickly that you couldn't do before. Just do it very quickly because that is an act of faith and saying, God, I know that you have touched me. I know that you have healed me. He is still the God of the supernatural. Amen. You have the faith to believe God for it. I know that your room is full with God right now. He is about to, to just love on you more and more and more and believe in him and believe in his word. Amen. And I'm going to close with a scripture here today. I want to actually give you a word and a revelation. I don't know about you. If you are ready to see doors open, if you're ready to see doors open, remember this in Revelation 3, 8, it says, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. We may be hurt, but we don't have to be held back. I'm speaking to someone here today. You may be hurt, but don't let that hold you back. You're entering into a new era. This is a new season. I don't know about you. I'm feeling the Christmas vibes already. I was looking at Christmas trimmings and I'm taking out my tree and I want to just set it up and enjoy Christmas already. You know, we don't have to wait. If I had my way, I'll have my tree up all here. So it's just the, the feeling and, and the, the, the love of the love that Christmas brings, that unity, that that belonging, that that connectivity, that joy and and oh, it's just everything nice you know I love Christmas so and I think it's probably all about Jesus you know because it's not about um, he is the reason for the season it's not about the nice things and all of that but it's beautiful he wants to bless us amen so look at the hills from where your help comes from I, I was listening to something yesterday and it spoke about praise and here's a line that goes praise through time for your breakthrough the words of Psalm 121 were strongly brought before me, those, especially verse 1 and 2, where the, the Lord is encouraging his people to look at the hills as he's coming to bring breakthrough and he's bringing help. In many cases, the divine intervention of the Lord will bring many of you to come in unexpected ways. It's times where you'll see him work all things that will come together for your life. Look with expectation and faith, knowing that he is faithful to bring it to pass. As he has spoken, allow your hope to arise as you feast on Psalm 121. Lift up your eyes to the hills from whence cometh thy help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. Look at the new horizons. Look at what is coming. I told you things are turning around. Look at from a heavenly perspective. I said, renew your stance. I said, look at things from a different perspective because God is establishing a time of us to rearrange things. He's wanting you to look at that problem, that situation that may have looked terribly saying, look at it with different eyes today. Just take, maybe turn around or move to the other end of the, of the road or whatever. Take a new look and you'll see what God is saying to you in this time. You've been feeling a stirring in your spirit. Some people don't know where they were or where they are going, but I'm telling you today, look at this thing. God is about to show you. He said, instead of hunger to move into a new place the Lord has for you, many of the body, in the body of Christ are awakening to this new thing that is set before them. Don't just look at what you want. Look at what God is showing you in this time. He's showing you a picture. You just got to shut your eyes and say, Lord, show me your glory in all of this. This mountain looked like it was never going to go away. Today, he's showing you a new way how to cross over, over that mountain because he is a supernatural God and he can do supernatural things. You know, I'm just remembering something that, that the Lord was telling me now is, I hear his voice, he said, Many people are running to try and acquire things like, oh, if I get this prayer shawl or if I get this menorah or if I get this oil or if I get this something, they're tangible things. Or if I get this particular Bible, then I'm going to be 
right. Then I'm going to be holy. Then I'm going to be no family of God. It's not about things. You know, we need to look at the God of the things. Look at him. He's saying, let people turn to me. I'm the author and the finisher of their faith. You know, we cannot put our faith in material things and possessions to make us feel good. Amen. We need to put our faith in God. And I know I spoke, brought a lot of scripture, but I wanted you to, to just, I wanted to remind you about the miracles and the signs and wonders and how the supernatural power of God is still working because God has not changed. He is just looking for someone to, to turn around and say, God, I'm going to change. Yes, you may be hurt, but you don't need to be held back. I like that. Yes, like that too, Louise. Amen. I just thought it's something else you said. Thank you. Thank you for coming online. I appreciate all of you watching today. It's 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 a bit different being on this platform, but you know what? So, uh, Wednesday we will do Holy Communion online and then Sunday's word. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and may he keep you and may he make his face to shine upon you. This is Terry Honey and I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Is there anyone that needs prayer? You can put up your hand or just mention in the comments there what it is you want us to pray for and we will stand in agreement with you. If there's anyone that has a testimony about the prayer that we just did now, just let us know and uh, build, up, build someone else up with your testimony of faith. Amen. Amen. I can love you all. Have a good day.